So over the last few weeks, we put a couple different motors in our Hyperblue STI. We had all sorts of problems. We finally got a motor in the car that is perfect. Brand new motor, new short block, new heads. Everything is good to go. The car runs absolutely phenomenal. And it is finally time to move on to the exterior of the car. This thing is actually pretty hammered. I'm not sure how well it's gonna show on camera, but for example, here's the hood. Pretty destroyed, pretty disgusting. Thankfully, the hood is clear broad, which as you can see there, it's peeling up. The wheels are disgusting. The tires are shot. So let's take some time and completely transform the whole exterior of our Hyper Blue STI. It is a very, very limited car and I wanna make it mint once again, like it's brand new. The car deserves it, it's well worth it. So without further ado, let's get this thing up in the air and we are gonna start off today's video with some wheel and tire action. So all of these wheels have some damage, this one being the worst of it. And if we take a look at the tires, they are pretty much well shot. So let's go ahead and make this setup look brand new again. These are exclusive to the Hyper Blue STI as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the only car that came with this style wheel in black. I do know the 2015 Launch Edition STI had the same wheel in gold, but not black. So, and they just so happen to be my favorite OEM STI wheel. So the next step in the wheel repair process is the chemical strip tank. If you guys are an OG subscriber, you already know, that is the powder coat strip tank. So it goes in looking like that, and it comes out looking like that. All four wheels are completely stripped. The last thing we need to do before we go ahead and slop them in the powder coat oven is run them through the sandblast cabinet. This is gonna give us the nice, a little bit more rough of a profile. So the powder coat will stick and last forever. So we got the wheels hanging from the powder coat rack. They are gonna go in the oven for the pre-bake cycle. It's gonna burn off all the impurities, all the BS, all the gunk that's on the wheels. So we get the absolute perfect finish. So the oven's set at 400 degrees right now. We're gonna run them for about 30 minutes, pull them out, let them cool down, and we can spray out some powder. So we got the wheels all finished up. Something weird keeps happening with the big oven. It does not happen on the small oven, only the nice big oven is it kinda puts out a cloudy finish on the powder coat. This color is ink black from Prismatic Powders and it's a very, very, very high gloss black. It doesn't happen in the small oven, but it does in the big oven. And as you can see, you can kinda polish it off. 
So I need to figure out what's going on there. I have narrowed it down to it being an oven issue, not a powder or gun or any other sort of issue. Because like I said, it's only happening in the big oven. Anytime we use a small janky oven, they turn out perfect. Kind of weird how that works. Let's go ahead and get a new set of tires mounted up on here and we can move on to the body, the paint of this car. Everything with the wheels and tires is all finished up, mounted, balanced, powder coated, ready to go. I do want to get them ceramic coated, but I'll do that when I do the body of the car. The next thing I'm going to do before we put the wheels back on and wheel this thing out and start the polish on it is clean up the wheel wells and do some brake stuff. So let's go ahead and get all that refinished. As you can see, the brake calipers aren't in the best condition ever, but I don't want to repowder coat them. I think we can restore them without powder coat. Let me show you how. Well, I got a little carried away as I always do and kind of decided to make this thing into a show car. So I just spent the last few hours cleaning up all the wheel wells meticulously and I decided to do the entire undercarriage as well. So now we're gonna lower this thing down. We are gonna polish the calipers and apply some new STI decals to the Brembo calipers and then we can finally move on to the body. Hopefully we can get done today. We still have a ton of clear bra to remove and I think this caliper restoration might take a little bit of time. We are all done with the first wheel well. Calipers polished back up with a new decal on it. Wheel well is nice and clean. All of the broken or missing clips are replaced. So here is a before and here is an after. Here's roughly what the caliper looked like before and here she is after. Beautiful. All right, moving on to the exterior detail of this thing. We are gonna start off with a wash, pull it inside, pull the clear bra, pull it back outside, iron remove, clay, and then we can move on to polishing.
That's so fucked. I just peeled the clear ball off the entire front end of this car in the last six inches of the bumper. Just this is your introduction to the channel. Just I'm ruining my this. That's a souvenir. Devin's probably gonna hang me from the ceiling with this piece of clear ball tonight. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Stay will. tuned. Oh my lord, that sucks. Damn. <laughs> I just gotta let him catch up to the amount of things he's breaking. Mm -hmm. So we're one down, we got about 55 to go. I got shit in my teeth. I have a hyper blue front bumper that I need painted. So whatever you got a second, give me a call back. <laughs> <laughs> it's here pretty good. It's not bad. That's surprising. That's pretty fucking impressive. Damn it, Trey. So very rarely do I have help on anything that I do on my side of the shop. I was getting so sick of pulling this PPF on the hood that I had one of the guys come pull the PPF for me. Hood is all finished up. Just got to do a little bit of adhesive remover, which I find gasoline in a plastic scraper gets that all off pretty easily. And then he went to go pull the PPF off the bumper, got it all done, had this one last section up top to pull. And as you can see, the PPF or the clear bra, whatever this is, it may be the same thing, I don't even know, went ahead and pulled the paint. When he first told me that it pulled paint, my initial reaction was, I'm not painting this damn bumper. I'm so sick of paint work right now, but I might still paint it myself. The only stipulation is I'm not setting up that stupid inflatable booth. It's so hard to get a good quality paint job out of there. If I do end up spraying it myself, I'm just gonna rent a booth, spray it out there. It'll turn out much better. And just to clarify, the bumper would have peeled no matter what, no matter who was pulling the PPF. It clearly just was not adhered properly here. And as you guys saw, I did pull, I did take the air compressor and try to blow more paint off. For some reason, the paint just did not adhere properly right there. The rest of the bumper's fine, so this will not be a bumper that you guys see catch on fire. Just got the hood all cleaned up. That thing looks brand new. I'm guessing it was under that PPF since day one. Got all the other decals removed from the car that we do not want on here. And now we're gonna go through and give her a nice clay. I've been liking just using the six inch clay mitt on the DA, makes it go quite a bit faster. And for the clay lube, I just use the foam, regular car foam. So what started out as just a little peel in the bumper while removing a clear bra, which if I could go back in time, I would have just left the clear bra on. Hindsight 2020, but look at this bumper now. It started out as just a little peel here. All of that peeled, all of that peeled. We had peel areas all over this bumper and I should have just went ahead and bought another new OEM bumper and started from scratch, but it is all prepped out now. Shout out to Mr. Trey. If you're watching this video, thank you for peeling the paint and then prepping out the bumper. Now it's ready for paint. I have not decided if I'm gonna be spraying that myself or not. If I do, like I said, I do need a booth for it. But now it is time to move on to polishing. Let's go ahead and see what we can knock out. This thing is pretty scuffed up and I wanna showroom condition. The end goal of this car is showroom condition. So let's take a look at how the paint currently looks. Do a little side by side before and after and go ahead and knock out the whole entire car. This is a very forgiving color. And I'm not sure if that's gonna show on camera, but I'm gonna go ahead and tape off a section on this quarter panel here and try to get you guys a before and after because if you could see this thing in person, you would understand that it's quite clapped. Okay, I sure hope I can get this to show up on camera because the difference is insane. So that side is a before, right where you see that line right there, where it crosses over to the after, put a little light on it. So the only two things I'm using to get that finish is the Rupes Bigfoot Polisher, blue pad, blue compound, which is the coarse, and then yellow pad, yellow compound, which is the fine setup. 
I'll link this whole kit down below and it makes life so much easier. I used to use a rotary. I would burn edges all the time. I went to a cheap DA and it took forever. And then I just bought this setup, which if you're gonna get into polishing and detailing, just go ahead and get this right off the bat. It's about $500, but it does save you a lot of time and it will save you money in the, in the long run because you're probably gonna buy one anyway. So let's go ahead and get this whole car knocked out. I did notice this wing is a little bit faded as well. So being that we're gonna paint the bumper, I'm gonna refinish the wing because showroom condition here. That's what we're after. I will accept nothing less. Before you go ahead and polish the panel, wipe it down with IPA, just get it nice and clean and get all the BS off. So every square inch of the car is now buffed out with the blue pad and blue compound. I do this a little bit differently than most I feel like. I'll go through, do the first step on the whole entire car, hit the glass, hit all that good stuff. And then I'll come back through with the polish, the yellow pad and yellow compound and hit all the paint. The windows, it doesn't change anything with the yellow setup. I'm trying to get all the water spots off and whatnot and they look absolutely amazing. Let's go ahead and run through with the yellows, get this thing nice and shiny, give her a nice bath, get all the compound off, and we can move on to sealing it up. We are all done polishing the car, got it cleaned up, 
it is ready for a ceramic coat. There cannot be any water whatsoever on the car when we go to ceramic coat it. So I'm actually gonna let it sit overnight and then I'm gonna come back in the morning and we can do all of the finishing touches. So I will see you guys then. Decided to pull the car outside real quick and take a look at it before we seal it up with some ceramic coating. Make sure all looks good and I must say, this is the nicest car that I currently own. There's not a single dent or scratch or defect in this entire body other than that front bumper. So nice. All right, let's pull her in, pop the wheels off and get some ceramic coat laid down. I just went through, did a light disassembly, pulled off the wheels so we can ceramic cut the wheels and the brakes, pulled off the windshield molding, pulled off the door moldings or the window seals there. So we can now move on to getting everything properly coated. I'm actually gonna start off with the headlights and to restore the headlights, we're gonna be using the Cerakote Ceramic Headlight Restoration Kit. Three very, very easy steps. Oxidation removal, surface prep as in sanding, and then the Cerakote ceramic coating. These things aren't terrible, a little bit crusty up top. I know we can make them better. Definitely the best kit on the market for your headlight restoration. Look at these things, brand new once again. Let's now move on to all these black pieces. If you can't tell, I'm putting the paint off till last just because it takes forever. All these black pieces are gonna get a similar product. This is also from Cerakote. This is their trim coat. So I'm gonna go through, wipe all this stuff down with some IPA, get it nice and cleaned up. All these pieces aren't bad. The piece that is the worst is always the windshield cowl. Check that thing out, pretty crusty. Here's a little side-by-side -side on the window moldings. The right is of course uncoated, left is coated. Moving on to the body, brakes, and wheels. All that is gonna get the same coating, which is, you already know, my favorite Avalon King Arm Shield 9 Nano ceramic coating. This stuff is absolutely amazing. As you can see, we're fully stocked up there for a while. We're doing a special discount for today's video only, which I'll tell you guys about here in a second. Ceramic coating is very easy. Don't overcomplicate it. You don't have to spend days polishing your car like I just did. While I would highly recommend it, you don't have to do it. If all you wanna do is ceramic coat your car, make it nice and easy to clean and protect your clear coat and get all the other added benefits of ceramic coat. Let me run you through it. So grab a towel, a new microfiber towel, Go ahead, grab some IPA, clean the panel you're gonna ceramic coat, or clean the wheel, or clean the brake you're gonna ceramic coat. Let the IPA evaporate for, let's say 30 seconds, and then you ceramic coat it. Easy as that.
Well guys, I had one mission and one mission only, and that was to create a near showroom condition, OEM, mint condition, perfect condition, STI. And I must say, I think I definitely achieved that. Of course, we still need to fix the bumper in the wing for the car, and I really want to pull it outside, but the, literally the second I pulled it out, I noticed it started raining, and with ceramic coat, we cannot get it wet for about three days. So let's do a quick little walk around and see how she looks. I know we used a ton of different products in this video, so let's quickly run through what we did. The powder coat on the wheels was ink black from Prismatic Powders. Polishing kit was the Rupes. As you can see, I have a ton of different pads, compounds, and polishers, but I literally only use the Rupes polisher with the yellow and blue pads and compounds. Ceramic coat is the Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King, which you can get 25, let me double check on this, I'm pretty sure it's $25 off of a kit and this is only good until midnight tonight so you only got a couple hours don't sleep on the steel very good deal 25 dollars off the kit automatically not just one but as many as you guys wish so i'll have that link down below armor shield 9 is the best ceramic coating i've ever found and used and then as far as other stuff goes we used the cerakote trim coat on all the black pieces this is what it looks like i'll link that down below and then of course the headlight restoration kit from Cerakote as well. I'll have linked down in the description box below. Mint, freaking mint. Had a ton of fun with this project. Still undecided as to what we're doing with the front bumper. Of course, it's gonna be painted. I'm just not sure if I wanna paint it or just pay someone to paint it and get it done and over with. But yeah, overall had a ton of fun with this project. I know on camera it probably looks like it took me a day, but I have been working on this project for I think five or six days now. So to do a full, restoration i guess you could call it does take a lot of time but of course the end result is insane well worth it hope you guys enjoyed peace out my good friends and i'll see you boys in the next video